Hello and welcome to Jaga Vision. My guest today is Adam Creek. I had this concept, Adam making tea in the smallest tea sets possible would just be amazing. <laughs> Put some tea in me. So I think that's what we gotta do. I, I think we might have fun. Do you wanna tell people a little bit who, 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 is, who is Adam? Who, when he's, when, when he's who not, is Adam When he's not Creek? home. <laughs> when I'm not drinking tea with <laughs> yeah. Jared. That's <laughs> when I'm not home. Yeah. Uh, who am I? Who am I? The first thing that comes to my mind mm -hmm. is that uh, I'm a father. I've okay. got three young children. Okay. Uh, I also work as an executive business coach uh, with leaders of organizations. In ages past, I have done a lot of rowing. Went to the Olympics a couple times, won an Olympic gold medal, uh, then planned a, an adventure. It was a scientific expedition where we were studying the oceans. We had a lot of, a large amount of uh, an educational curriculum where we were educated around uh, 25,000 kids in the USA and Canada and West Africa. And we took a rowboat from Dakar, Senegal, all the way to the Bermuda Triangle where we capsized. But one of the finest memories I have from being out there was, you know, of the 73 days at sea, we had uh, at very O-Dark th o dark 30, which was probably around three or four in the morning. It was, you know, match at tea time. And we'd pull out the tea yeah. from Jagus Silk in oh, the yeah. middle of the ocean. And we'd just warm up the water. We'd put down the oars and we'd just float there. And we'd look at the stars and you'd just drink our tea. And it was, it was a perfect time in the 24 hour clock happened every single cycle, except one that was storming. When right. it was storming, we couldn't make tea. I remember um, seeing a picture of all of these like brands that were sponsoring your, and it, it was all these like, they were like multi-million dollar brands. And then we're like this little like operating out of our living room at the time, I think. Maybe we just opened up, the, no, we'd opened up the shop, but it was very like just the lower area. And uh, to see our logo on your boat was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was awesome. Yeah, and then that was that was ten years ago, if you can believe it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, ten years ago that we rode across the ocean, and so then since then it's been, you know, leadership training, executive coaching, working with, you know, yeah, organizational leaders, and translating these stories of you know, rowing and adventure into, you know, life lessons, leadership lessons, right. management lessons. You have a really good TED talk. I yeah, mean, TED talk, that... I Seek Failure. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah I'm actually quite well, proud of that one. It was very, very cool. Yeah, it's very inspiring. We were, we were out <laughs> rowing this morning at uh, what my dad would always call old, dark, stupid, but it was beautiful, beautiful. And uh, we got to watch the sunrise from, from a, a rowboat. I had this concept and I thought it would be really cool for the show is I just wanted to, I, Adam making tea in the smallest tea sets possible would just be amazing. So I think that's what we, we, we got to do. And, 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 and I figured before we do that though, I should explain to you a little bit about um, what we're looking at here. Okay. Okay. So one of the first uh, things we're looking at is called a gaiwan. Have I ever showed you a gaiwan before? I have seen a gaiwan before, but... If I were to see a gaiwan in the street, yeah, you outside, would, I would not look at it and say, that's a oh, that's a gaiwan. Right, right. You, oh, look you, at that clever you, you, little you, you, gaiwan you, with you, the kitty tail on it. You'd need it to be pointed out that this is, this is, this is gaiwan. I'd say gaiwan. I would okay. say, look at that bowl with the lid on it. Right, right. <laughs> As most would. Did you know we did the tea festival all online one year? During yes. the pandemic. Yeah, over, over COVID yeah. shut down. 24 hours. We did a 24 hour show. Well, the reason I bring it up is I'd say almost everybody was using Gaiwan and was making tea the style that I want to show you, which is called Gong Fu Cha. And it was actually really inspiring for me because um, for me, I, I think I was, I was uh, there's this inexorable pull, I think, when you're operating a, a tea wholesaler to cafes or even to like folks who are making it at home in, in Canada where you need to go, you need to go bigger. You need to show them how to, you know, brew perhaps carefully, but mm. understand that most people like a mug of tea. Um, that most people like to use that two liter teapot that their grandma and gave just them. And sit there. Yeah, and, and it's, but, and not that there is anything wrong with that. Um, mm. That is a way of enjoying uh, tea. Um, I think that it's mostly to me, uh, at this point I'm like, okay, when I make tea, 
in these bigger volumes, it's hard to dose appropriately. So unfortunately what happens is you often brew longer to mm -hmm. sort of make up for it, which is yeah. going to bring out, I don't think more we're, tannins. we're not curating the flavor in the same way. Yeah. We get more tannins, more bitters. We often hide them with honey. And that is what ends up happening. And so to go smaller has been something that we've always in encouraged. So I was always like 180 grams, 180 mils. Like that's, that is where we should be starting. And then I was grudgingly making these eight ounce drinks. When I went on the show, everybody's doing 60 mils, 75 mils. And I'm like, it's wow. Like so I'm, I'm the, the roles have been reversed here. So I'm, 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 they're like, oh yeah, you could do a six ounce drink. I understand. It's, it's a. You we'll know. come here for the experience. Yeah, or we had uh, we had Daniel on uh, from the Chinese tea shop. Yeah, and uh, and I, I bring this example up a lot on Jagavision, but I think it's funny because he says to me, he says, if you're gonna have tea with somebody mm -hmm. and you're gonna be talking and not really focused on the tea, drink out of a large cup. If you really want to understand the tea, though, drink out of a small cup, <laughs> and that's the large cup. <laughs> and I thought that was the awesomest thing. Like, look at look at that. Look at oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> hold up this teapot next to it. Like, mm. <laughs> like they're like the same size. <laughs> like, I don't know. Tiny if that, little, like, I don't know if that's caught in the in the camera. Can I? Can I? I'm gonna put like an even. Like this is this is like equally sort of like right side by side. Those are almost exactly the same size like they're so close it's yeah, i think it's hilarious anyway um so what i found was that by making tea this way i um i was actually enjoying it in a way that like I, have you ever had rock oolongs rock oolongs yeah no. so they're like wuyi mountain uh, phoenix mountain you'll get these uh well wuyi mountain is famous for the rock oolongs um, okay. and they're going to be a charcoal roasted deeply oxidized oolong um they're going to be super fragrant Beautiful, beautiful tea. Beautiful, beautiful tea. And um, I think that to make them any other way but this is 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 sacrosanct. It's just you're missing you're missing out. <laughs> you're totally missing out. Give me well, one part second. of part of the magic of tea, and this is what I've learned from you, Jared, is slowing down. Right. And especially in our current world, we're constantly rushing. Uh -huh. We're constantly going from place to place. Well, and you know it. You run this business. I know it. I run you know, my own small business. I've got little kids. And mm -hmm. life is really freaking busy. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard just to take that space and sit and drink tea. Right. I had this Estonian grandmother. Her name was Helmi. Okay. And uh, she had this, this. The Estonians were dominated by many different, you know, cultures but the germans had them a lot okay and so she was she grew up there and she had this german saying she had she said you know wir setzen tee trinken okay which is we sit we drink tea you know there's lots going on mm. it's crazy and there's like i feel the need to go and go and go and go but right now it's time to drink tea so everything stops Amazing. for the tea mm. And I guess to this day, I remember that of her. You know, she's, uh, I'll sit down and I'll be drinking tea and I'll be like, yep, the, there's lots to do. And I'm going to forget about it. And I'm just going to just focus on the tea. Just focus I, on the tea. I think perhaps that's what I find so attractive about this process too. I think it really, it really encourages that. Mm -hmm. There's something really counterculture and important about that. And I think that we need to pursue that. What is this called? A gong fu chu? So gong, gong fu cha, it's the same. Gong fu cha. So cha gong, is tea. Gong fu And then gong cha. fu is the same characters as kung fu. So some people say kung, kung fu tea. Fu cha. When you're um, choosing the teapot, um, being aware that this is actually a large-ish gaiwan, um, there is a, uh, an even bigger one over here I'll grab. This is a huge Ooh. gaiwan. Look at that gaiwan. size of that beast. Yes, um, this is like a large man side guy one. That's a, so so that that is gonna hold a full five ounces. So the what's Ooh, <laughs> put some tea in me. I like turning tea 
and water into drinkable, delicious pause time. <laughs> Killing me, man. Oh, man. Okay, so, so large, small, so small. <laughs> 150 grams. I'm just a little guy. Oh my god. But the tea is so much better. You can really appreciate me if you drink from me more than this big slug. <laughs> so this is an Yixing teapot. This is um, Zixi. Um, and it's it, you can see that this one is kind of glossy, denser. Mm -hmm. So when you want to trap aromatics in the teapot, um, you want to use something more like this. You'll notice both this guy, um, more so this fellow, is not glazed on the inside. Interesting. I don't know if you can see in there. But when shiny when it's... Shiny versus non-shiny. Yeah, when it, but if you compare that to this, which is glazed on the inside, yes. right, or glass, what happens here is that the, what we, we've learned over time is that the that the, the the texture this is going to cool faster because it's more porous mm. this is going to cool slower it's also bigger more water cools slower mm -hmm. all these kinds of uh thermal dynamics um but also the the clay itself is going to charge the water in a particular way that it's going to extract differently oh. so you can actually choose a teapot to produce different flavors um uh, does a teapot ever get seasoned so if you use a teapot over and over again and you're always doing it this is my oolong teapot. And then all of a sudden you just drop a totally different tea in there. Yeah. Right? A fresh green Well, especially tea. when they're not glazed on the inside. That's why mm. when people are cupping teas, they, they'll often go like, okay, a true understanding of the tea is only gonna be possible through a glazed on the inside brewing vessel. Mm. Ideally it's something like this, a guy wong. So you're always cupping oh. your teas. And then you, once you've established, like I can dose a lot higher mm -hmm. in something like this. Like I can do a heavier dose than a guy wong. And the clay itself helps to temper the tannin that would otherwise come out mm. and allows me to taste more full flavor depending Ooh. on the tea that I'm working with. So in an Yixing teapot, I'm probably going to use something that's a little bit more basey, okay. um, so like, a, like a crimson tea or a, you know, a true black tea. Um, so the clay is acidic. Mm. When you say basey, I'm, I'm thinking basic and I'm um, thinking well, chemistry, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm thinking more like, like uh, a long enzymatic oxidation. So where you get more malty notes. So when I say okay. basey, I think malty, sweeter. Sweeter, okay. And then, and that's a good thing, but those teas, when I extract them too long, can get acidic or tannic or both. Yeah. Um, and when I use a, a, a clay on the inside teapot, I can help temper that with larger doses. I oh, use lower- clay tempers the tannins. Yeah, yeah, somewhat, yeah. And it does depend on the clay that you're using. So some teas will taste better in different uh, yeah. clays. Different yeah. clays. Um, uh, for the the reason why gaiwans are good then is because it provides a neutral environment. I question this theory these days because what is neutral, right? And water, well, you know, your water that you're using, uh, the the ambient environment. Like, there's so many things that are interfering with that of neutral. Variables. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, if you're always using the same water and you're cupping a bunch of teas together at the same time, it makes sense to me then that reducing some of those variables is probably yep. a good idea if I want to understand them in context with one another. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, reduces very scientific. This is uh, this is our perspective. So how Gong Fu Cha is normally made is it's more like a like a philosophy. So it's uh, a philosophy. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing in the bad tea and, puns. And, you know, yes. There are so many bad tea puns <laughs> because because the that that the T Y endings in, in, in English, there's yeah. so many of them yes. that you know like yeah, it's yeah, we're just having a party. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm I'll, gonna try to bring out as many bad tea puns as I can. No, that's good. That's yeah. Good. Do you want to have a a uh, a phoenix a phoenix mountain oolong called mm. Yashi Shang that translates as duck shit aroma? Yeah, Yashi Shang. Yeah. Is this Yashi Shang? That is. Okay. Or would you like to try? Is it this one? No. There it is. And, uh, or would you like some Menghai Ripe Pu'er from 2006? Not, neither of them have a, much of a dry aroma. You're going to really smell them once they get in a hot teapot or rinsed. Which one's stronger? OK. 
Okay, I'll go for the right pu'er. Okay, I'm going for the right Partially pu'er. Partially because... I thought I had you at Duck Shit Aroma, but... I, d I do like... Well, can't we just do both? Wait, let's do both. Okay. I'm let's, gonna, start, let's start with this one. Wh why, don't I, why, don't, why don't we make them at the same time? Ooh. And then I'll make one. You make one. You're kind of like shadowing me. Okay. So it's like a how-to, okay? So okay. that's, I think, which was this, the oh, initial sure. sort of impetus of our... Of our why don't I make the raw pu'er? You make the duck shit aroma. So, okay. all right. So, first of all, you need to know what you're working with. So you're gonna say, no, okay, I'm gonna up. make, uh, I'm gonna make my tea in a guy wan. Well, I don't know how much water can fit in there comfortably. So let's weigh out how much fits in there comfortably. To me, that's about there, 75, 80 percent. So I'm looking at 65 grams. Okay. Okay, that's comfortable. That's comfortable. So why then, why is when, that comfortable? It's a good question. Why is that comfortable? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I often think mm -hmm. to myself, one gram for every 20 mils. So um, I would often dose thinking that this is an 80. It's interesting for me to do this because I always mm. think of this as an 80 mil guy want, but it's so, obviously not. It's a 65 mil. Then I often smaller. put four grams in there thinking that I'm doing one gram for every 80, like, oh, sorry, four grams for every 80, so, so that's one gram for every 20. I'm actually overdosing, but I like it that way. So we're going to continue to overdose. So what uh, is uh, one gram to every 65 mils then? How do you divide that by four? 65 divided by four. I can do this. 60, 15, 15, 16, 16.3. Mm. 16 16.3 grams. Okay. So that's one. So every, you could say like, we'll make it easier. It's one gram for every 15 mils. Okay. So okay. if you're going to do 15. So if you're going to, if you're going to say, do this teapot, Mm -hmm. At 80%. Oh, that's not quite teared. Oh, you want to tear it? Thank you. Should I be moving this uh, number tear for you? <clears throat> How's that? Yeah, that's for the viewer. Yeah. I, I, you just make it till you feel comfortable. Yeah. So and this I'll is... tell you the... Yeah, that's, that's comfortable to me. See, that's pushing 80 now. Yeah. That's 77. So that, to me, is a, a much larger teapot. But it's only 10 mils, which is kind of interesting. Well, well, maybe 12. more like, sure. Yeah. Way more than 10. Well, yeah. More than 10, less than like 15. 20% more yeah. than 10. Definitely yeah. 20% more. If I got a 20% boost on anything, like yeah, on my you're, pay, yeah, you're going to be you're my gonna living be, space, you're going to be happy. I would be happy. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so why don't you um, pepper the, in? The tea goes in first. The tea does go in first. So, you okay. know what? I'll actually, where's a. Uh, this little Accurate. scale is going to be good for me. Okay. So I'm going to... You're going to do your own? Yeah, I'm going to do my own. You're going to do your own. So, so we know this is slightly bigger, slightly smaller. You're going to do one gram for every 15 mils. That means you're going to do, you're going to do what's 75 40. divided by 15? 75 divided by 15. <clears throat> 15, 15 30... 45, 60, 60, 75, five. Five. So let's do, five tear grams. that guy, five grams of the yashi sheng. And then I'm going to do, yashi sheng. Yeah, I'm going to do the right pu'er. And I know that I have 60 grams to work with. And for pu'ers, I know that I use 33% um, more than Ooh. the standard. So instead of using the four grams, I'm going to use six. Okay. Uh, We're actually going to be releasing some pu'eres pretty soon through an allied program with uh, one of our our friends in the industry. Okay. He uh, he's a, a little bit of an eccentric. Um, he he told me one day he said they call me Doctor Midnight. He said, and I said, what, what are you talking about, man? He's like, it's my tea name. I said, what's a tea name, man? I've never heard of a tea name before. He's like, that's what they call me in the tea world. And I'm like, okay, Doctor Midnight. Yeah, I'm like, that, that is hilarious. Tea. That made me, that made me laugh. So, what's hard. your tea name? I, I, Let's. We need. So, Jag of Silk Vision, Jag yeah. Vision, one thirty-five. Yeah. Tea names. Tea names. Jared's tea name. Adam's tea name. We need to find one. Adam Teak. Adam Teak. A T, but it's, there's a hyphen. It's a really, really bad tea name. Adam okay. Adam Teak. Yeah, that's the um, Antique. Q U E. Antique. Because I like teak. I like the teak wood. I like old things. But I, I'm more I, of an I, uncle than an auntie. I, I, 
Okay. Um, Uncle Teak. Your, your ne- so, <laughs> my T name is Uncle Teak. We've established what we need, but we should back up a bit and go like, okay, whenever I'm training people, I always say there's four steps that we need to be aware of. So okay. one is uh, mise en place. Having all your ducks in a row. What do you need mise for the process? Mise en place. So all, is that French? It's a French restaurant term. It's used a lot in restaurants. It's just like having all your, your dishes, everything, all your ingredients ready. So that mise when you go to make place. the dish, you're ready to rock and roll. So oh, it's like being a good carpenter. You get all your tools and you lay it all out. And you say, ah, uh, so I'm not running back and forth 100%. to the tool shed. I've just got it all here. So we each now I can just sit and I, I've got my little weight got scale. I yep. got my hot water. Got hot water. It's all ready at temperature. We have our cups. You're going to pour me a cup. I'm going to pour you a cup. So we have need four cups. So we're making two teas at the same time here. We have our yeah. So what do we need? We need the tea. Yeah. We need the brewing vessel, the decanter, the hot water, the scale. Okay. And it's nice to have a One, tea two, sink. Three, One of these. It's, it, it, it's good. Pause. Yeah. I've got your uh, underground tea name. Okay. Philosophy Master T. <laughs> it came. Philosophy Master T and Uncle Teak. The Philosophy Master T has a specific way to brew your tea, <laughs> and you will get the best results every single time. <laughs> so listen up to the Philosophy Master T. Uncle Teak oh. is just a novice, <laughs> just learning from the Philosophy Master T. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay all right i uh i, I took you off no that's good that's good you keep, you keep you keep me grounded um so the idea is that that's what uncle teak does for the philosopher master t yeah it's good it's good <laughs> i'm gonna jump in one more sure. time because I, would, I remember reading this study when i was back back many moons ago when i was a student in university sure and they were studying the pleasure centers in a brain and they were studying wine okay <clears throat> and they were giving people uh like they're sipping wine through straws and they had their heads in these mri machines and they're measuring all the pleasure centers oh, in their brains i bring how... this story up a lot i think it's oh, the same one same is it, one it, so, it, is it the wines it was about wine okay. and they had one group that they educated deeply okay. on the tannins, the the origin, the the full story, everything that made this wine special. And then the other group they didn't educate. Okay. And who do you think enjoyed the wine more? The educated. The educated. Yeah. So the more you know, the more pleasure you can have. This is actually so, this is a 2006 Menghai Pu'er. It's a ripe Pu'er, so it's a, almost like a forced fermentation okay. where they've uh, purposefully piled it. And, um, and and encourage. Is that pretty young, 2006? For a pu'er, you want to start drinking generally when they're about 10 years old. But okay. ripe pu'ers, you can start a little bit earlier. Ripe pu'ers kind of are looked down upon a bit. But around this time, in mm-hmm. like the early 2000s, the story goes that techniques were improving quite substantially. Mm. And so now you're tasting some really great ripe pu'ers from this time period. Okay. Um, and they were still not super expensive. So if you buy the same factory's tea now, um, it's quite a lot more expensive and doesn't taste as good because it hasn't matured as much. Can so, you buy, do people do that? They buy pu'ers and then just let it sit in their own basement for 20 years? And Adam, if out? I could redo Jug of Silk, this would be the much smarter thing to get into. Really? Because it's like an asset. People have pu'er caves where they keep a protected mm. ambient environment. You asked Why about, not do it? Are you doing it now? You, uh, we are. Yeah, we have some in the closet right now that we're aging. But a dedicated... Yeah, that's the pu'er closet. That's right. <laughs> Instead of a WC, it's a PC. Yes. Um, the the we have a uh, we have a um, I know yeah puns puns all day. Philosophy master T dropping <sighs> dropping the T puns. You got a self hug. Yeah, yeah, exactly, something like that. Um, uh, where's my big clock? I want like a 1990s rapper clock. You know? Clock. It's, you know when they would wear the big time. like analog? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the timer goes off. We're ready to bing, bring. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> We've been steeping for yeah. three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Phoenix Mountain uh, pu- uh, uh, oolong. Yeah. So the difference between these two is that this pu'er um, has uh, it has actually um, it's involving a bacteria like with sourdough. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're actually going to see a fermentation. A lot of people say tea is fermented during its process, but that's not necessarily true. What's really happening is that there's an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase that uh, polyphenol oxidase it's called the PPO enzyme okay. that is enzymatically oxidizing the tea and transforming its color, um, the sugars, all sorts of things are changing after you harvest it. 
And when you want to pause or, or deactivate that enzyme, you pass heat through the leaves. That's why they're steamed or parched, et cetera, to do a process called, called kill green. In the world of oolongs, the difference between them and a green tea, a green tea, you would pause that process pretty quickly within mm -hmm. 24 hours of harvest. You would steam or parch to keep it mm -hmm. as a green tea. If you want it as an oolong, you're going to allow that process to go a lot further. So the lead, it's like when you brown an apple, similar idea. Yeah, you're just right? letting it slowly ripen. Yeah, and then you they, now there's ways of doing this to speed up. Like they'll have them on oxidation pans. They'll like get in there and like start like turning them and stuff. And then mm -hmm. you know like the ambient environment is going to play a big role. And then when it's like okay, it's ready, then they kill green. And then from there, they're still going to manipulate the leaves roll them, crush them. Um, in this situation with the Phoenix Mountain Oolongs and with uh, the Wuyi uh, teas, you're gonna, uh, Wuyi Mountain Oolongs, you're going to see them do a charcoal roast afterwards as well. To so they'll just have like charcoal smoke coming up and they'll, they'll go through the leaves. It'll be it, sitting on some kind of sieve. Uh, ideally not hit it, hit with smoke, but, okay. but heat it <clears throat> that way. Yeah, on, in like a walk. And they're like kind of ro uh, moving it with their with their hands and, and, and letting it cook a bit. And then there's like- So the slope. charcoal doesn't, the, the charcoal aroma doesn't come in, but it's sitting on like a steel. As little as possible. You do pan. taste a little bit of it in my opinion, because of the environment that it's, and, and, and the person who's doing it, the, um, the craftsman is very important too. You'll have the farmer who's produced the leaves yeah. and then they'll actually often contract out the charcoal roasting to uh, a, a, an artisan who specializes in that part of the process. Right. And so does the artisan... It's like our sencha, we finish firing our tea roaster over there. Yeah. Uh, that is what happens with sencha. You have, you have well, uh, it, uh, it's the brings it to a certain point and then to finish it, to bring it from 5% to 4% moisture loss, yeah. it goes through this, this light cooking. But then they're use, just using their hands. Yeah, and, 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 and moving it around in the... Uh, so you get some of the oils of the skin of the person who's... For the person who's doing it. Now, that being said, there are people that use stainless steel. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I, I know. I'm like into the it. idea. I'm, I'm into, into it. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, it's, it's drinking great. oils from <laughs> some guy's hand. He's yeah, it's like, kind of sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you see, you know, how things are processed. Grains mm -hmm. and coffee beans, uh, etc. when they're on... Or and they're on the ground on tarps, etc. Mm -hmm. It makes you think. Hmm, maybe the food that I'm having isn't as clean as I thought. But the, generally, it's on raised beds, and well, we need to it. have a little bit of dirt in our life. We do, right? Yeah. And it's like the conversation we were having earlier. It's yeah, if you need just enough dirt to keep you strong, but too much dirt will break you and make you weak. You know, it's, exactly. Um, so you and, need and, just the right mixture. And hand rolling, like people get very sensitive with their hands on where it yeah. is in the process and how damp it is still and when it's done mm. and, you know, and there's the smells and there's like, there's a lot involved in the hand rolling process that I think is mm. so much more interesting than a mechanization. Um, mm. But the puer is actually pressed into cakes when it's done. Not all puer is, but a lot of it is. Bricks yep. or cakes. Bricks are the square ones, cakes are the round ones. Um, and that's not happening with the yashisha. And again, Yashishang translates as duck shit aroma because the legend goes that the farmer um, called it that so that his friends wouldn't steal it from him. Okay, so let's make some tea. Okay, so. Tea time. Tea time. What we're gonna do is we're going to turn on our scales. I like to, you could also check your, your, your volume during this process, what's called the rinse. You just need to cover the leaves and then I like to position the lid on an angle like this so that I can pick okay. it up with my thumb and middle finger and then I can hold the lid down with my pinky or with my index and then I just empty it into the tea sink. It's called the rinse. The rinse. How long do I hold it for, hold the rinse for? Maybe three <clears throat> seconds, five seconds. Okay. You can move pretty quickly. And then you uh, you smell the lid when uh, you've that's when you get a sense of the, the wet fragrance of the tea. Mm. So you want to smell that one? It's gonna smell so good. Like that's when you oh, get Oh, the... that's divine. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like that's, that. That's nicer than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, the that... duck shit aroma. It's, it's nice, you yeah. can't, right? It's just, it's, 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 it's pretty next level. So at this point, I'm going to just re-check that this is at 99. Nine. I like to set my temperature variable kettle at 99 because otherwise it gets too... 99 Celsius? Yeah. <clears throat> um, because uh, if I say 100, then it's, it's steaming the whole time and mm. I evaporate out all my water, you know. Well, some people talk about 
teas at 70 degrees or 80 degrees or 90 degrees. Yeah, in Gong so, Fu Cha, you're generally doing it at 100. You okay. sometimes go as low as 90, but these flash infusions are what make it okay. Have you ever done pressure cooker tea? It'd be interesting. Yeah, that'd be super interesting. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Like, why not? I don't, I don't, I'm curious. It's I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I like the idea, though. Like, just bringing, but you're talking about bringing the temperature up past yeah. 100, right? Yeah, so put yeah. it in the pressure cooker, and what does a tea taste like if it's a 200 degree Celsius. I like this idea. Gong Fu Cha. Yeah, it's like espresso, right? Like it's, so you get to play around with a, a hotter temperature because you're involving pressure in the process. Somebody um, must have done that. They must have. Yeah, well, I haven't heard of it, but I'm espresso? sure it's been done. Okay, have you ever packed an espresso thing with tea? See, so you don't re-tear. And the reason you don't re-tear is you want to know what your residual moisture was, how much mm -hmm. was absorbed. So mine, mine is three grams. So I'm gonna pour, pour mine up and I know that I remember with you, we were just saying like 65-ish was comfortable. That's that 65 now. Now for you, uh, you want to bring it up to about a little under 75 yes. because you've teared. So, and then I'm going to, after 15 seconds, and I'm watching this analog clock, um, I'm going to put it uh, into the decanter, actually 30 seconds. And then for you, you're gonna do something similar. You're gonna you're gonna move pretty fast, and it helps to and don't don't swirl it if you can help it. Oh, you want why it to, not the swirl? Because that agitation brings out uncontrolled extraction. Ooh. So if you uh, if you can keep it fairly um, stable and let nature do its work, then you're able to repeat the process a little bit easier the next time you pour. Okay, so it has the same. But what if I'm an artisan and I swirl it the same way every time? You know, that's the nice thing about Gong Fu Cha is yeah. like the philosopher's tea because you get to make the rules, it's true. right? And my, my personal way of making Gong Fu Cha, the way I like to do it, is I love to, I really like weighing stuff. I don't know what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. but I like weighing the water, weighing the tea. I like knowing. Um, and I find that, that that's just an interesting process for me. So... You know, if you're drinking in order, we should have the oolong first, and then the, okay. and then we should have the uh, the puer second. So, um, you know, we talked about visual observation, dry aroma um, earlier today. We were looking at our cupping uh, sheet here. Here, we would actually look at the 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 color, right? Very different colors. Yes. Interesting, they're the same plant. Hey, like it's just so fascinating to me. Like you look at those one, leaves. One just, has more of the yellow yeah. tinge to it. The other one's a deeper red yeah. rusty color and you can see the, the leaves where there's this like really interesting oxidation line around the stem right it's kind of fascinating what well, is interesting to actually look at the tea leaves and picture the plant because <clears throat> so often we're raised especially if you're not raised in a a tea you know, tea drinking household, the only way you've ever been exposed to tea is in a little tiny bag. Right. So you're just thinking, you think of tea as a tea bag, and right. then you don't really think of it as a plant that grows on a tree that is It kind of harvested. divorces you from that, the, tan the raw botanical, yeah, yeah. for sure. Whereas when you drink it this way, you get, that's actually a really interesting point. It connects you to, yeah, isn't that have a nice aromatic? Like kind of toasted, kind of cassis thing happening. What's cassis? Like current. I find that I get this kind of cooked current smell. Mm. I like the <clears throat> the roasted. Like the roasted tea smell is pretty divine. Mm. Like that caramelization of the sugars, and and it's sweet. Like there's a sweetness to it. And then mm -hmm. when you when you when you sip it, you know if you you can slurp if you like. Um, and I love my favorite part of a tea like this is the cup after I've drunk it. Like, drink it, and then the smell of the cup is freaking divine. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that amazing? That's nice. <laughs> Colossal Master Tea. There you go. Yeah. So, so this is the Puer. Normally we wouldn't drink them side by side. We would have one and then the other. But this is going to give you you know, that kind of mushroom, mycelium, forest floor, soil, earthy.
You sip that. It's a rounder flavor. Yeah, right? It dances more on the roof of my mouth versus the <laughs> sides of my tongue. So when I was saying basier teas, you, mm -hmm. this is what I mean. This is a basier okay. tea for me. Like I... Yeah, I'm tasting. It's more earthy. Yeah. Would basie be more earthy? Especially in this context, the, the puer. Yeah. So if I'm going to move everything over, we can, we can continue this process actually on the tea stage. So, you know, if I, I'm going to brew another extraction here. Yeah. Well, that's going, I'll fill this up. Your timer's still going, right? What does it say? My timer? Yeah. <clears throat> 430. Okay. So when that hits about 445, I'm going to end my extraction. We can finish the rest of this extraction. And then I'm going to, it's hit 445. I'm ready to finish my steam. I love um, that timer counting up. It just lets me stay aware of time. Mm -hmm. I find that for a personality like myself, who's easily distracted, mm. for whatever reason, timers and scales really help to um, bring me to a place where I can really be with the extraction. That's really important with Bong Fucha, mm. is you're not just pouring water on it and forgetting about it um, because you're working with such a large dose of tea mm. compared to the amount of water. It's really easy to make them taste aggressively bad. Mm. But if you're doing these pulse infusions, it's really interesting because you can go 8, 9, 10, 15 steeps. Just pour it on. It's like one of the best, like I love setting up a little tea stage. And Camellia Sinensis sells some beautiful ones out of Montreal. Um, but about this big, I, I, they're one of my favorites. Um, and I just have my, my, I have like a thermos. So you seen me when we went rowing that mm -hmm. one time, I brought mm -hmm. that thermos on the, yep. on the boat. Yep. I just have boiling water in a thermos. Uh, and I'll just pour that. And I learned that from my friend uh, Charles, who, uh, who he's the he's been on Jagavision too, but he's the accordionist who like, yeah. we stopped in the middle of a gas station uh, oh, parking Montreal. lot in Montreal to get picked up by my sister who, uh, who we were visiting. And it was just like we were we were the goods being transferred to the other car. But when we pulled up into the snow in this gas station parking lot, he like pulled out this beautiful tea set with a nice Darjeeling, a thermos. It was just so special to drink out of delicate cups in a parking lot in a gas station. <laughs> There's something really amazing. I love bringing this on on hikes mm. and just setting up on a log and it's just, you have these beautiful cups and I mean, you can carry it in a camera bag, right? And and, and instead of doing like the metal camping cups and, yeah. and the, the plastic and metal and all that, just so things don't break, purposely bring something that's so delicate, just, Absolutely doesn't make sense. I love the, the, I love that. I love that. It's just, it's matcha in the woods on a mountaintop, for example. It's just so amazing. Mountaintop matcha. <clears throat> What's your opinion of the little tiny bits? A lot of people strain them out. Those little bits. You can actually use a, you can use a strainer that mm. I have in here. What about just like chewing them? I like them. Yeah, I can't find it right now, but there's a, I have a, a tea leaf. Yeah, you can just use a sieve if you don't like them to sieve them out. But I, I, I enjoy them. And, and in some perspectives, if the tea leaf is standing straight in the cup, for example, then it, it's good luck. So. Okay. I like good luck. And I love the second infusion. See how dark it gets? It's like, it's even darker. That's going to make you feel pretty good. And like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is about puer in the morning, but when you make it strong and it's small, doses like this I just makes me happy all day <laughs> huh? here's to happiness philosophy yeah. master T yeah. <laughs> okay. that's on nicer that's nicer the second time around it is yeah it gets smoother and smooth that's why I had to make it because otherwise you're just gonna think oh where it's just this thin thing like isn't that nice like just the texture of it like I really mm. love the texture of that tea well, it's um, just, it's, it sits in the back of your palate and then it rests in your nasal cavity. <clears throat> but it's kind of like, I find like a smoky whiskey. It takes some getting used to, but once you, or like a stinky cheese, once mm -hmm. you get used to it, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But there's this sort of like getting used to it phase. That's, that's a little, you know, it's a lot easier to, this is a lot easier to love. 
Oh, it's, you know, it's like, like it straight recently. off the bat. Yeah. So we're on a new system right now where we have a part one and a part two. So you're watching part one right now and make sure that at the end of this episode, you're aware that you need to click to part two.